You could just look at the time on your phone for free. But why do that when you can spend some money on a watch? I'm going to take a look at a whole bunch ranging from a dollar, ten dollars, a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars, and even a million dollars. Whatever you're expecting, it's even crazier. It's hard to believe it's even possible to get a watch for a single dollar, but you absolutely can. AliExpress is full of deals on watches that are as questionable as eating on the toilet. For less than a dollar, you can purchase what very much looks like a chronograph watch in a variety of different colours, from suspicious silver to ropey rose gold. Whether you should actually buy one is another matter entirely. I'm led to believe that not only is this a quartz watch, it's a men's business quartz watch fashion fake three eye six pin calendar men's watch mesh belt men's watch watch. What's more than a little alarming is the addition of the word fake, like that's going to be the kicker that gets you to add this thing to basket. Oh boy, this suspiciously cheap watch is also fake. I'm buying 10. If the very real looking images of said men's business quartz put you off, you might still be swayed by the offer of not just an additional 10% off, but another 2% on top of that. If they carry on like this, they'll be paying you to take it off their hands. Even if they did, I get the sense you'd still feel shortchanged. You wouldn't be the first to buy one, if that helps, because not only did 18,200 142 people buy one before you. 2,839 of those mad lads actually left an average rating of 4.5 out of 5. So what are you waiting for? After all, if you do buy one and it turns out to be worse than the ending to Lost, at least it only cost you a single buck. I'll let you know because I've actually gone and ordered one. Make sure you subscribe to see that. From questionable life choices to a watch that's so legendary there should be a day in its honour, we upgrade our $1 by 9 to get to $10. $10 these days is barely a tip at Starbucks, let alone a reasonable amount to buy a watch for, so you might be pleasantly surprised to find out that it's a transaction that can be accomplished very successfully. Enter Casio, a manufacturer of all things electronic. From keyboards to cash registers, the Japanese giant has dominated since popping into existence in 1946. If you're older than 30, your childhood will probably be bookmarked by founder Casio Seisakujo's brand. You probably tried learning to play House of the Rising Sun on a Casio CTK451. You were probably at your most creative with the letter function on your Casio scientific calculator. You were probably jealous of the kid who had the Casio remote control watch, and you probably got a stupid suntan thanks to your Casio F91W. The Casio F91W is pretty much a constant in this universe. It was $10 decades ago and it will continue to be $10 long after we've abolished currency altogether. It is simultaneously the crappiest thing you'll ever own and one of the most robust and reliable. It will be found doing duty inside an improvised explosive device and on the wrist of the specialist trying to disarm it. It's the watch equivalent of the tardigrade, ever present and invincible. Not only is it packed with gizmos like calendars and stopwatches and alarms, it's also more accurate than a Rolex, lasts seven years on a battery and, despite being classed as only splash resistant, has accompanied many an owner comfortably underwater. It's the biggest overachiever since Herman and Pauline Einstein decided to settle down and start a family. It's by turning the wick up to $100 that we can finally enter the realm of the mechanical watch. It seems almost ridiculous to pay more for older technology, but then you're talking about a species that finds entertainment in watching other people watching entertainment, so you're more likely to find logic in astrology than you are here. It so turns out that cheaper, better, more accurate electronics, despite being cheaper, better and more accurate, just don't tickle the timekeeping pickle quite like a spring and some gears. It's it's a human weakness, Seiko, a brand that ironically popularised electronic watches in the first place, is more than happy to exploit. The Seiko 5 SNKL23 stands out for being the last bastion of the $100 mechanical watch, powered only by the kinetic energy of its wearer. That means couch potatoes and Paul Alexander need not apply. It's a technology that dates back hundreds of years and, despite its archaic principles, still remains very much popular. The basic premise of a mechanical movement is as follows. A spring is wound tight 
by a weight that swings round with the wearer's movements. That spring then drives wheels geared for hours, minutes and seconds, a bit like a clockwork toy. To make sure the spring winds down at the right speed, there's an escapement, which is kind of like a mechanical capacitor that alternates between blocking the spring and letting it run, allowing tiny amounts of power to escape eight times per second. That's what gives the watch the sweeping second hand, where an electronic quartz watch ticks once per second. It's a gentle reminder that we were playing timekeeping on hard mode for hundreds of years, back before kids had phones and had to play ball in a cup instead. So far, we've been spending chump change, the kind of money you could drop on a birthday steak and not feel too guilty about. Let's up the ante and go for a full thousand. Spending one thousand dollars is a pretty serious thing to do, so you might be surprised to learn that when it comes to mechanical watches, it's still very, very much at the lower end of what's available. RIP my wallet. And what do you get for that extra nine hundred dollars? To be honest, not a whole lot more. For a thousand bucks, you'd want the watch to massage your feet and sing you to sleep, but nope. Still mechanical, still hours, minutes and seconds. Seems as worthwhile as a doorbell on a dinosaur. So why bother? Five letters. S-W-I-S-S. -S. Switzerland has dominated the watchmaking industry ever since a bunch of farmers got bored of freezing their butts off and started making tiny watch parts instead. When American industrialists took their watchmaking mass production techniques to Switzerland for the tax incentives, business boomed. And before you could say, whatever happened to British watchmaking, it became a $22 billion concern. Tissot is one of the oldest players in the game, setting up shop in 1853 in the Swiss municipality of Le Locle. To put that into context, that's just two years after Antoni Patek and Adrian Philippe joined forces, 22 years before Audemar Piguet got going, and a whole half century before Rolex even entered the scene. That's lovely and all, but is it worth an extra $900 over the Seiko alone? Not really. Which is why Tissot have made a bit more effort to make this Seastar 1000 Powermatic 80 Silesium a quality piece of kit. Headline figures from the off, this watch is a dive watch, which gives it the addition of a rotating timing bezel and 300 meters of water resistance. Why would you want to dive to 300 meters in the first place when that's the deepest any human has ever dived with scuba gear? I don't know, but you can. Completely non-ironically, there's also some high-tech trickery going on with the Powermatic movement, which gets a silicon balance spring to prevent it from being affected by magnetism. One of the many downsides of making a watch from delicate metal parts instead of computer chips is that magnets are their kryptonite. Not the case here, thanks to the same stuff they make computer chips from. Yeah. But overall, what you're looking at here is the very beginning of where we're going. Quality. The Seiko is a solid watch, but it'll win no prizes when it comes to perfection. It's rough and ready, whereas the Tissot is slick, detailed and quite literally polished. Welcome to a term that we're about to get very, very familiar with. The Law of Diminishing Returns. If you've wondered what it would be like if I wrote a science fiction novel, wonder no more because you'll find exactly that in the link in the description below. Thank you for supporting the channel. What could you get for $10,000? A car? A boat? A thousand hundred dollar bills? How about a watch that looks almost exactly the same as the one we just saw for a thousand dollars? This is the Rolex Submariner and I've chosen it for our $10,000 spend to demonstrate how identical it is on paper to the Tissot Seastar 1000. It's also Swiss made. It gets the same 300 meters of water resistance. It will run on a single wind for the same time as the Tissot, actually slightly less. It has all the same functions and is basically the same size and material too. Perhaps you thought we were looking at white gold or even platinum. Nope, that's steel. It's a special steel, slightly different to the stuff cutlery is made from, but in terms of overall improvement, it's about as effective as putting out a forest fire by spitting at it. It might surprise you to learn then that despite Rolex making tens of thousands of these Submariners every year, they're all completely sold out. Trying to buy one is like trying to get the attention of a waiter when you want to pay the bill. It would be easier to win a Nobel Prize for prolonged stable fusion than it is to get a Submariner. 
Yeah, it's a bit more accurate than the Tissot by a few measly seconds every day, but don't forget that terrorist favourite, the $10 F91W, walks all over both of them in that regard. Boasting about the accuracy on the Rolex is like boasting about the 0 to 60 time on your horse. So why $10,000? because of the law of diminishing returns. Quality is higher still, but it'll take magnification to prove it. If you're over the age of 40, it's basically theoretical at this point. Oh, and another little detail I missed out. Rolex is the biggest, most desirable luxury watch brand on the planet. I don't know if you'll be more mortified by the idea of spending $100,000 on a watch than you will be pleased to see something that isn't just the same kind of watch again, but with another zero on the price tag. But whichever way you fall, this is still the Patek Philippe 5327G. Everything that applies to the Rolex and even the Tissot before also applies here. This is one of the oldest and most prestigious Swiss watch brands going, without which the Swiss economy would just have to make do with chocolate and cheese. It's the granddaddy of the whole industry, laying claim to enough firsts to make Lewis Hamilton jealous. One of those firsts includes the very first wristwatch with a perpetual calendar. What is a perpetual calendar? It's a fancy way of saying the date is always right. Never mind having to remember which months have 30 days and which have 31. A perpetual calendar does all that for you. It'll even keep an eye on the leap years too, making sure February behaves itself. All you have to do is keep it wound and you'll be all right. Hardly impressive when the digital clocks we all have in our pocket can literally get the time fresh from a passing satellite. But when you've got to figure all that out with just a pile of metal parts that are barely big enough to see, that's when it gets impressive. This Patek Philippe has 275 parts crammed inside a white gold case that's just 39 millimeters across and not even a centimeter thick. There are fewer parts in a car engine. So how do they do it? The answer is slowly and carefully. A perpetual calendar movement is built around a component called the calendar wheel, which maps a four-year cycle month by month with different length teeth for each month. That tells the date mechanism when to skip back to the beginning. Not only is it mechanically impressive, it's also spectacular to look at because through reasons of tradition that originated to provide reliability to these tiny engines, every single part is decorated. This finishing process sees a high polish or different grain patterns applied to every single component, even the ones you can't see. And that takes a whole bunch of time. The people who can do this work are naturally very expensive, and so the watches too. Let's say you're a bored billionaire who's sick of your lame $100,000 timepieces looking to sink your teeth into something proper. Something that costs an entire $1 million. Although a disappointingly small amount when it comes to shopping for a place to live in San Francisco, it is nevertheless more money than most people will see in their entire lives. And you can buy a watch with it. One such watch is the Jacob & Co Astronomia Flawless Diamond, and already there's a clue in the title. If you were challenged to make something as expensive as possible, the first and easiest thing to do would be to douse it in glue and roll it in a pile of nature's forbidden candy. The true value of a diamond is a whole other topic altogether, however, for the sake of this discussion, it's fair to say that people be tripping for them. The Astronomia Flawless takes a slightly different approach than most, however, putting the whole diamond budget into one 2.88 carat flawless diamond smack bang in the centre. But to be honest, that'll be one of the last things you'll notice because the rest of the watch is absolutely insane. First of all, you'll notice the case looks like they forgot to render it. That's what it looks like, however, milled from a single block of sapphire. Yes, that's sapphire, like the precious stone, although in this case it's been lab-grown to be colourless. Within the case is a model of the solar system, and whilst its accuracy would make Neil deGrasse Tyson cry, as a piece of mechanical sculpture, it's about as mad as it gets. Earth is a ball of highly flammable magnesium coated in blue lacquer and white gold. It rotates every 30 seconds and travels once around the dial, every 10 minutes. Why magnesium? Because it's dense enough to balance the weight of everything else going on here. Representing the moon, or the sun or something, is another diamond. One carat this time, layered with 288 facets in a pattern called the Jacob Cut. Looks amazing, sounds like a threat from Bricktop. Then for the opposing axis, there's a dial. 
this is still a watch after all, if only just about, that stays right way up as the whole thing orbits the watch. And on the opposite end, there's the regulating organ. Most times that mechanism, the escapement, is static. Fancy escapements, known as tourbillons, rotate around a single axis to counter the effects of gravity. This tourbillon rotates around not one, not two, but three axes. Because of course it does. Because it costs a million dollars. What watches would you buy for the budgets? Let me know down in the comments. Please like and subscribe as well if you enjoyed the video and want to see more like it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.